Welcome to the Colorado State Employee Assistance Program podcast focused on personal well-being. We ask leaders across Colorado State government how they manage their own emotional well-being and mental health. My name is Natalie Newman, and I'm an EAP specialist with the Colorado State Employee Assistance Program, or CSAP. We offer mental health counseling, leader consultation, critical incidents response, mediation, and webinar and facilitation services. You can find more information at cseap.colorado.gov. Thanks for listening to the podcast. I'm excited for the opportunity to speak with Lieutenant Governor Diane Primavera, who has been in her role since 2019. So thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day to sit with us. Well, thank you for asking me. This is really important. Yeah. Lieutenant Governor, you currently sit on a task force on workforce mental health policy. And because this topic is so nicely tied to what we talk about here on this podcast, I'm curious, what, what are you able to share about your work on it and, you know, any findings that you anticipate? Well, first of all, I was honored to be asked to be on this national task force. It's actually a bipartisan effort. Uh, It's led by the U.S. Department of Labor. Uh, Secretary Martin Walsh was at our first meeting, and I actually co-chair the task force with Tennessee State State Representative Becky Massey. Um, I'm also joined by Colorado State Representative Daphna michelson Janay, who is co-chairing one of the subcommittees. So it's the task force is for a couple of things. It's about strengthening our workforce, uh, making sure that we have resources to, in place to help people succeed. So we're going to look at best practices across the nation, try and come up with policies uh, that we can put in place to um, further the goals of the task force. So it's like building a three-legged stool for us. Um, we're approaching the work from actually three different uh, issues. Um, one is um, that we want to make sure that employees uh, can access the support that they need with an emphasis on behavioral health services when they need them. So that's why CSEP is so important. Uh, We also want to create an inclusive workforce for employees uh, with disabilities and grow and sustain our health care workforce because if we don't have the people to take care of people, um, then there's no point in having, um, you know, mental mental health supports. And then we know that a lot of our providers have experienced some burnout. And we want to make sure that people who help the people um, also get the supports that they need. So um, we have had one meeting, so we're really early in the process. We have another meeting uh, scheduled in late uh, January. But again, our goal is to develop state policy plans to support the mental well-being of workers and address behavioral health workforce shortages and take care of the caregivers. Gotcha. Great. Yeah. And right. There's so many caregivers just within the state in the roles that they play or just even the roles that they may have personally, too. Correct. Yeah. It's really important. We, we've noticed a lot of burnout in our in our first responders and we want to make sure we take care of them. Yeah. Now, we're still fairly new in the calendar year, and this is often a time when people reflect and set goals. And I'm curious, how do you prepare for and plan for mental health and wellness goals in the new year, both professionally and personally? You know, I think a lot of it isn't much different from what I've done in years past. You know, I think it's really important to exercise. Uh, It's really important to eat right. Uh, It's really important to... Uh, get enough sleep. Um, it's really important to balance your work life and your personal life. That's always really important to me. And then I think it's really important for people to uh, set goals where they really have something to look forward to. And I think that that's a real motivator. Absolutely. And these are often things that, you know, when people come into offices at CSAP or other men- mental health offices that we're often talking and coaching folks through some of those issues of how, how do you set goals or what's important? What are the things that you value in your life that you want to kind of have some positive things to look forward to? Exactly. Yeah, that's really important. You know, I, vacations are really important maybe learning a new skill. Like myself, I've always wanted to learn how to play the harp. And so I'm thinking, okay, you know, maybe I can figure out how to work that in this year. And and tango, I do a lot of dancing, which is really good for your mental and physical health. And um, getting more involved in Argentine tango this year is going to be one of my goals too. So oh, wow. setting fun goals that you can have something to look forward to that are also healthy. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, so interesting. Well, you know, speaking of some of the things that you like to do to reduce your stress, what are other things that you regularly do to support your own mental well-being? Well, a lot of time with family 
is really important to me. I have three little grandkids, and, you know, they bring more joy than anything. So, you know, I think it's really important to spend time with the people that you love and people that bring you joy and people that bring you up. Um, you know, I also have a dog or two, and, you know, I think uh, your pets can be a really good uh, avenue for therapy. Um, so I think that's really important. Um, you know, having fun things to do. And again, as I mentioned, I think, you know, really eating healthy and drinking lots of water, making sure you get your exercise, because one of the things we've looked at from a policy perspective is there's really shouldn't be any separation between mental and physical health. They're really integrally tied. Mm -hmm. And so um, if you take care of one, chances are the other one's going to be impacted too. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's something that we talk about when we work with clients is, you know, and also some of the other things of, you know, how's your sleep? Mm -hmm. Are you eating regular meals? Those things are so important to how we function both physically and mentally. And then I think also, you know, if you look at sort of the dark side of things, avoiding a lot of alcohol consumption, you know, smoking, those kinds of things. So really valuing this health that we've been given, I think, is really important. Yeah. Well, as a leader, what are some things that you do or encouragements that you give to your team in support of their well-being? Well, you know, last year for Christmas, actually, we gave everybody a gratitude journal because, um, you know, when I've had some difficult times, you can always find somebody that has something that's more difficult. So, you know, if you keep a gratitude journal, uh, you know, and you write down every day three things that you're grateful for, and they can't be the same thing, you know, every day that eventually you begin to look for things to be grateful for, and it's really a change in your whole mindset. So I, I really want the staff to practice gratitude. Um, we try really hard to make sure people balance their lives. You know, I tell people when they're off, be off. Take care of yourselves. You know, that's really important. And then, you know, I think a lot of things we do in our office, we don't do a lot of micromanaging. I think that can be really, really hard on employees if they're micromanaged all day long. And, you know, if, if you're in a job that you love, I think you're a lot more um, apt to be, to be happy. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't get up and just I'm real excited to come to my work. And I think if, if everybody was excited about their job like that, it would be really a lot better workplace. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And there's so many nuggets there. I love that, that piece of really enjoying the work that you do. Certainly, you know, we see people who might not feel like their values are reflected in the workplace and that can be really really hard and lead to burnout and I also really love that piece about about gratitude mm -hmm. and the, the the novel component right our brain really likes novelty and so being able to recollect something to be grateful for that's different from from what you may have written the previous day can help with that negative bias that we have as humans mm -hmm. And, you know, I think um, also that uh, one of the things we've all done is gotten into public service with state employees. And public service is really important, and, and it's really important to keep data on the things that we do. But I always tell staff, you know, be behind every single number, there's a human being that you've helped. And I think, you know, if you can keep that in the front of people's minds and, and let employees know how important public service is, and what value there is, I think, as a manager, that's important, too. Yeah, the value that, that as an employee, that they bring. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, what resources or things do you do to regularly support your mental health? Well, again, you know, it comes down to um, whenever I'm having a hard day, I always realize there's somebody having a harder day. And sometimes when I've been in my darkest periods, if I... I think, okay, well, who can I help today? Because I think, you know, by helping somebody else, it gets you, you know, out of your, your doldrums. So, you know, those are some of the kinds of things I do when I've had a hard time. I've also uh, taken advantage of CSEP. You know, if you have a, a health issue, if you have a relationship breakup, if you have a death in the family, a job loss, those kinds of things, you know, getting help from a professional, I think, is, you know, is really important. And then just overall, like I said, every day just trying to take care of, you know, your health both mentally and physically by eating right, exercising, getting outdoors, recreating, having friends, a purpose in life, those kinds of things are really important. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for the plug. And absolutely, I think we live in a great state where we're able to 
take advantage of, of the weather, or being outdoors and connecting with others. Exactly. Yeah. And it's really good to have a community, you know, people that you can just friends that you can rely on when you're having a, a tough day. Yeah, absolutely. And you spoke about this a little bit earlier, but the importance of a support system, right? Whether that is friends or family or whatnot. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What is the biggest stressor of the many things that you have on your plate? Well, I think sometimes there's so many issues in the world um, that stress me out that, you know, I really kind of feel powerless in, in the face of such large problems, you know, in our country. Uh, and grappling with them, I think, is, is tough. I think gun violence for me continues to be one of those major stressors. You know, I've attended more funerals than I ever wanted to uh, for young people who were simply going about their day you know they were either going to the grocery store or going to a movie they were just at work you know making a living and their lives abruptly ended in a senseless act of violence and that really that really pains me a lot so you know I know it's a national issue um, that not only is our state grappling with but many states are and I'm really hopeful that we can come together in a bipartisan effort uh, to address gun violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah and when those things kind of are impacting you, whether, you know, emotionally or whatnot, what are the things that you do to take care of yourself? Well, you know, I, I try and do something about them, you know, for one thing, you know, and I, um, you know, I, I was lucky to go with uh, Admiral Levine to talk to some of the Club Q survivors, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just the trauma that they've dealt with has been, you know, just really, really horrendous, and so, you know, I think I, I come home, I do a lot of reflection. You know, I, I get up the next day and I come to work with, you know, a lot more passion, realizing that there's so much more that we need to do and that we have to do and that we want to do, you know, to make Colorado a better place. So, it, you know, it, it, it drives me to be a better person. And, you know, again, it's back to self-care again, you know, just making sure that you take care of yourself so that you can be there for other people. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm reminded of, you know, what's good for you is good for the collective and being able to take care of yourself is so important. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. What are some things that you encourage your team or division to help to support their own mental health? Well, you know, as you mentioned, we're really lucky to live in Colorado. And I think a lot of state employees don't realize the, you know, rich benefits that we have, you know, in our state. Uh, to help people. You know, as I mentioned, CSEP um, is a great resource. Uh, in terms of uh, we mental wellness, um, we have no-cost outpatient mental health services uh, with copay medical plans. Um, we also pay for many preventative medications, uh, including insulin, diabetic supplies, uh, some cardiovascular drugs, antidepressants, and more. Uh, they're now covered at no cost, which I'm not sure, you know, state employees know about. Um, we also have um, lots of different uh, work going on with our coaching for people. Uh, in, the, in, our st in our state of health, we have up to 12 individual co coaching sessions for people uh, looking to improve their health. Um, we have confidential mental health counseling. We can get free sessions, uh, six per rolling year. Acupuncture is actually uh, covered on all medical plans, and, you know, that's something that's used in, you know, other countries and that's very effective so um, it's something I've actually taken advantage of in the past for certain things and then what's uh, really exciting is we have gender affirming care um, so we can have uh, gender affirming treatments and surgeries that are covered by uh, all of our medical plans so you know I, I would encourage state employees to you know look at their their benefits and you know take advantage of some of them. Yeah, and certainly, you know, we provide some additional context on our on the CSAP website about some of those and certainly about our counseling services. And, you know, as a reminder, all state employees are eligible for up to eight sessions per rolling calendar year, which is a really great benefit. And we do tend to work on a you know, a short-term solution-focused model, but, you know, there are clients that we might see one or two times, but then there are folks who, you know, do really uh, use the service multiple times or ongoing um, to get support, um, whether that is in personal issues or professional issues. And similarly, we have that um, professional coaching as well. And, and yeah, like you mentioned, a lot of the other different benefits um, for state employees, which I imagine other folks just within Colorado um, might have access to through their own 
benefits. Exactly. Yeah. And people need to take advantage of them, you know, because sometimes it's just a little bump you need. And I've had people say to me, well, I'm not going to um, go for counseling. I don't want somebody to tell me what to do. And I said, sometimes they don't tell you what to do. They ask you the right question because you have the answers yourself and you just need to be able to come up with them. Yeah. We are oftentimes just asking the questions because they're the experts in their own lives. And so they have the answers. We're just helping them uh, to, to find that. <laughs> yeah, it just gives you sometimes food for thought, you know, if a, if a therapist or counselor asks you just the right question, it can really kind of nudge you in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what challenges have you come across in supporting your team and their mental health? Well, I probably have the best team in the state, so <laughs> I'll just give a, a shout out to my team. And, you know, they're just... They're very intelligent. They couldn't be more passionate about their work, and they work nonstop. So I think one of my big challenges is to help them really realize that at 11 o'clock at night, they don't have to answer emails. You know, they don't have to, you know, work through their lunch hours every day. So I think my biggest challenge is to encourage them to really balance their lives. And when they're off, be off. When, when their fellow employees are off, don't be calling them, don't be texting them, don't be sending them emails, don't be doing that. Let them be off to refresh and regroup and get ready to come back and, and serve the public. So they're just so passionate about their work that they become, they just work too much. So <laughs> Boundaries is the word that keeps coming to exactly. mind. Exactly, <laughs> boundaries, exactly. Yeah, and that's that's so important. And sometimes, you know, when we're we're givers, and there are a lot of people who work in state government who are givers that just really want to help and be of service, but it's also like, oof, we can't pour from an empty cup. Yeah, and you can't solve every problem, you know, as much as you would really like to. And I think that's why people get into public service is they – they want to be the problem solvers. They want to make the state a better place. And, and you know, at some point in time, you just have to step back and say, you know, I'm going to give it my best, but I can't solve every problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that, that piece of I need to take a break, right? Like the, it is good to take breaks. I think people often are like, oh, no, if I take a break, I'm going to have to stay later. But oftentimes when we do take breaks, we are able to come back to our work more refreshed and focused and really able to work on the task at hand. Yes, with a whole different perspective sometimes, a whole different energy. Yeah, absolutely. I think of, um, like, I think it's Albert Einstein who, you know, he might get stuck on problems, like when he was working on math problems, and then he would go, I think, play the piano. And it engages other parts of your brain and how that can be really helpful when we're feeling stuck. And sometimes when, we, when you're more relaxed, things come to you. You know, sometimes I've said to some people, Oftentimes I get my best ideas in the shower or, you know, when I'm just waking up in the morning and it's like, oh, yeah, that's what I need to do. You know, that's that's the answer. Yeah, so yeah. I think sometimes you can just get stuck thinking and thinking and working and working and you just need that break. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this is one of my favorite questions to ask, but what does self-care look like for you at its worst when things are hard? Um, there's lots of asks, both personally, professionally, professionally busy, packed schedules, all of that. What what does self-care look like at its worst? At its worst, I think when you get really busy, self-care goes. You know, when I'm, you know, my days are crammed or I'm traveling for work or whatever, I religiously pack my exercise uh, outfits, my tennis shoes and everything, but do I exercise when I get to the hotel? No, because we're going, you know, 24-7. So sadly, exercise is one of the first things to go. And for me, if I'm really exercising regularly, I'm also eating better. So uh, oftentimes when you're really stressed, the go-to is Cheetos and comfort food and things like that. And, and that's probably the worst thing you can do when you're really stressed. But, um, yeah, you, you kind of fall off your, your regular habits uh, that are healthy habits and, you know, go to the comfort food and don't exercise and, you know, work too many hours in a day. So that's – and don't drink water. Mm. I mean, one of the things that I've really thought about for a goal for the new year is drinking more water. I, I sort of got in the habit when I was in the legislature of not drinking water because then I would have to leave committee and I would miss something and I might be late for a vote or I might be whatever. So drinking water goes by the wayside when I'm really busy, and, and that's probably one of the most important things you can do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, that is something I talk with clients about too. It's like, you know, if you're dehydrated, that puts 
your body under stress and we tend to feel a little bit more anxious, mm -hmm. you know, not that drinking a gallon of water is going to remove all anxiety, but you know, it helps to lower that baseline. Exactly. When you think how much water our bodies really are com comprised of, yeah, water is really important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I'm curious, I've, I've read and you've talked about how dance is really important to you. How do you make time to, to get out there and, and dance? Well, I think part of it is, like you said earlier, boundaries are really important. And I will actually put it in my schedule that on, you know, a certain night, hold that night, you know, because I'm going to go dancing because there's so many studies that have shown the benefits both mentally and physically uh, of dance. Mm -hmm. um, even in, most women dance backwards in ballroom for the most, most of the night. And uh, there have been some studies that have shown that going backwards actually helps you with your memory. And so um, it's really, uh, it's one of the, the healthiest things you can do. I'd encourage, encourage everybody to dance. So, yeah, you just got to make it in your, put it in your schedule and make sure you get there. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Well, and how, how did you get really interested in dance? How did that become a regular part of how you take care of yourself? Well, it's kind of a long story. I've been a single mom for over 30 years. And so um, as a single mom, all I did was devote my life to my kids so when my youngest daughter went off to college, people were worried about me, and so was she, um, so were my kids. So when my daughter sent out her thank you notes for her high school graduation gifts, she would remind people of the different things I like to do and ask them to come invite me to go, craft sales, bronco games, dancing, whatever. And so a friend of mine asked me to go dancing with her after my youngest daughter went off to college, and that's how I got started. And then I met some uh, men who wanted to take dance lessons, and you know, it's really endless what you can learn with dance, just endless with the different types of dance and everything. And it's, there's studies have shown how important it is uh, to, you know, keep your memory. There's been some studies, I believe, I've heard uh, about uh, it might help people not get Alzheimer's. But just the, the mind-body connection when you dance and then, you know, the, the friends that you're involved with and the community and the music and you know, everything else is just really good for you. So I would encourage anybody that's interested to take up dance. Yeah, yeah. It's not the, not only the um, physical thing, but right, that, that community that you've built around it as well. So, well, and favorite type of dance? Um, I really like uh, ballroom, and there's certain dances in ballroom that I really like. Uh, West Coast Swing is one of those, but um, ballroom and Argentine Tango are two radically different types of dances, and so... Um, I, not that I know everything about ballroom, because I certainly don't, but I'm going to try my hand at Argentine because it's just a real challenge. Oh, that's awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing a bit about that. And certainly um, anything else that, that you'd like to add on anything that we've talked about today? It's just really important that we take care of ourselves, you know, and the better care we take of ourselves, um, the better we're going to be as state employees. So that would be my final words. On this podcast, we focus on mental health and well-being. If you are an employee of a state of Colorado agency or Colorado higher education, public university, or college, you are eligible for the Colorado State Employee Assistance Program services. You can visit cseap.colorado.gov for more information or schedule an appointment by calling 303-866-4314. Thanks for listening.